Hello, I'm Dr. John McDougall. I'm a medical doctor. I take care of patients, and I've done that for nearly half a century. I've been interested in the uh, effect of diet on diseases uh, for over 40 years. And I've run uh, residential programs for over 30 years. I've taken care of over 12,000 patients. So, you know, I've earned the right to talk to you. I, uh, of course, am an expert in internal medicine, and that means taking care of problems such as obesity and diabetes and high blood pressure and kidney problems. And I've helped you over the years with a dietary change, giving up the rich Western diet full of meat and dairy products and refined foods and oils, and you've uh, flourished. You've gotten rid of your high blood pressure, your diabetes has gone away, you know, you feel great. You lost that extra 40, 50, 60 pounds you never thought you'd lose, and you're never hungry again. And I feel good about that. I mean, to help other people is really what it's all about. But this day and age has uh, presented us with a whole new set of challenges, to say the least. In fact, all anybody ever thinks about these days, I think, is the, the COVID-19 pandemic, which is caused by a virus, as you well know. Worldwide, this has resulted in severe suffering, economic devastation, disruption of societies, but it's also made people think about changing and realizing that we have the ability to change and almost immediately can we change. That's something that people haven't reacted to when it comes to chronic diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure and overweight. These are something that we've considered uh, tolerated in our society. I don't understand it. When it comes to this virus, you're not uh, very tolerant, are you? In fact, you're very interested in people getting this problem solved. And we've uh, learned about methods that work. In fact, they've worked for probably thousands of years, certainly hundreds of years. And these are public health measures such as wearing masks, washing your hands, and remaining distant from people. And I strongly recommend that you do this. Uh, Mary and I were trained early in our career to work in an operating room, in a surgery. And we learned about sterile technique. So we know how to keep our environment clean. And we encourage you to do the same. When you go out, you wear masks. In fact, you may wanna wear two masks and certainly an N95 if you can get it. You wanna wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, maybe longer. And you wanna stay at least six feet away from people, probably much, much more distant because this is a virus that has a, a tremendous ability to infect people. It is very contagious. It's similar to the viruses for chickenpox and measles that we had 30, 40, 50 years ago and before. It was well known that if you walked into a classroom where somebody had had chickenpox, you were gonna catch it. Even if there was nobody in the room, you're gonna catch it. That's right, the virus and its dried particles remain for a long period of time. And so it is with certain contagions, certain viruses, and COVID-19 appears to have that ability to be highly contagious to the point where people don't even know where they get it anymore. It just seems to be every place. And you can't uh, use uh, contact tracing to make a difference because it's just so common in our society in the United States of America. But uh, you're gonna do what you can to avoid this uh, virus. And I think it's absolutely crucial that you take advantage of these public health measures. Now I know you're, you're looking for a vaccine. We all are to save us. And it's really important that a vaccination be developed and also be distributed so that people take it. I'm looking forward to a vaccine. I mean, I haven't held my grandchildren in nine months. It's been difficult the changes that we've made over time, the isolation, not seeing friends and family have been very difficult. And I know it's been even harder on many of you suffering uh, sickness and even death in your families and economic, dev dev <coughs> economic uh, disasters. It, it's, it's, I know it's been difficult. And the vaccine is gonna be an answer, but the problem is, is that the vaccine may be a delayed and a disappointing answer. Yeah, it could be delayed for sure, but they're already talking about, even though the vaccines have been developed, they're already talking about the fact that it's going to take maybe six months, nine months, a year to get these vaccinations into a, an adequate number of people to make a difference. Well, I think that's being optimistic when they talk about the second quarter of 2021, 
being the time when anybody can get a vaccination that wants it, I think they're being optimistic. But let's just hope that they're right and we can deal with this particular virus. That's this particular virus. Do understand that there are new viruses coming. You know, there may be an Ebola-like virus that comes up, a uh, swine flu, an avian flu. There are all kinds of viruses that are coming up these days. Maybe another COVID. This will be COVID-21 or COVID-22. Who knows? But uh, the frequent pandemics that are occurring are a direct consequence of the changing of our environment. It's climate change. And so ultimately, we have to address climate change if we're going to solve the problems and have a world that's more livable. I know you want this vaccination, and I certainly do too. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to give it to my family if I find it to be efficacious and safe. Yeah, I've had a couple of experiences that make me question this. One is when I was a young doctor. Back in the 1970s, I took care of patients who were threatened with swine flu. Lots of people got the immunization for swine flu, the flu shot. And as a result, <clears throat> they had very little flu. I don't think the result of all the vaccinations, they just had very little flu that year. But I did see some very serious adverse consequences of the immunization program. Two of my patients got a transverse myelitis, which means that their spinal cord was, uh, was dissected and they spent the rest of their life in a wheelchair. This made a big impression on me. I was really worried about giving immunizations after that particular fiasco. But even though I may not have taken them for a while, may not have recommended them for a while, I got back into the propaganda that these are effective. Well, I uh, had a demonstration of the lack of effectiveness of flu shots, and they are very, very ineffective. And the reason they're ineffective is because of the fact that these flu shots are built upon viruses that occurred years before, last year, two years ago, three years ago. And that virus, same virus, never seems to come around. It's a different virus. And as a result, we, we show uh, benefits that are so small, almost imperceptible. But anyway, I uh, listened to the propaganda and I got back into flu shots, so to speak. But when the next swine flu epidemic came through, which was about eight years ago, I decided to hold off because the vaccinations were not very effective because I was worried about the side effects. And as a healthcare worker, I was allowed to get the shots. They were in a rare supply in great demand. And so I was allowed to get the shots. I got 19 shots for my staff and my family members. And I said, I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator and I'm not gonna take them because this is likely to be ineffective and may have significant side effects. I'm not gonna take them till my neighbors start dying of swine flu. Well, my neighbors never died of swine flu folks and therefore I never took the shots nor did my family or staff. But my family does have full immunizations, diphtheria, tetanus, typhoid, polio shots, even hepatitis shots. I just don't give the flu vaccine to people for the reasons that I told you. And I'm going to evaluate the new COVID vaccines with the same thoroughness, the same concern. I'm going to listen to the real scientists, the real experts, and uh, make a decision as to whether or not my family would deserve this protection, whether the good will outweigh the harm. And I'll let you know how I feel about it. But in the meantime, I want to get back to talking to you about diet because that's the other tool in the toolbox that you have. And you only got two tools in the toolbox. You've got, uh, you've got the public health measures. In other words, masks and washing and distance. Yeah, you hear enough about those. You really need to do those. We also have better health to guide you through this in a rather painless way. That's right, it's discovered... Uh, that the health that you're in depends upon how severe this viral infection will be in your body. Not surprising. Research shows that people who have a history of heart disease, diabetes, overweight, kidney disease, high blood pressure, they're at high risk of uh, going on to having severe complications from COVID-19, such as hospitalizations, the need for a mechanical ventilator where you end up drowning your own fluids for two weeks. And then too often death follows that time on the mechanical ventilator. Well, it was first discovered in China before the virus even came to the United States or Europe that people who had heart disease, diabetes, overweight, high blood pressure, kidney disease were a setup for these severe complications. The CDC told us so, so did Anthony Fossey, and so did the British Medical Journal. They told us that the food 
the food will make a difference as far as whether or not you end up as a as an asymptomatic person or as somebody who goes on to have a very serious morbid outcome. You certainly don't want to do that. There's no doubt, no doubt in anybody's mind that if you go into this pandemic in good health, you're going to do fine. Yeah, you're going to do much better than your neighbors who are in bad health, they have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, et cetera. Your neighbors who are in bad health, the 80% that are overweight or obese, yeah, that's becoming a... It's becoming a pandemic all over the world itself, obesity is. So you can certainly, by getting started now, make a big difference in your near future. But even after you get the infection, I think you can make a difference, I do. Say you got the symptoms, a little cough, a little stuffy nose, had a, had a, a test on it, showed it was positive. You know, it's not too late to change your diet. I don't think so. Because I've seen such tremendous changes in our patients over a 10 to 12 day period of time. 90% of people were able to reduce or stop their medications, particularly those for diabetes and high blood pressure. People felt well, immediately better after about 24 to 48 hours. Within seven days, we were able to lower cholesterol 22 points. The average weight loss was around three pounds, eating as much as you wanted. Blood pressures came down, inflammatory factors came down, insulin levels came down. Everything improved in a short period of time. I believe you're better able to fight the infection even after you catch it, if you change your diet. So hopefully I've convinced you to change your diet because you don't wanna get sick and because you don't want your neighbors to get sick and your family to get sick. And of course, you don't want the hospitals to be overburdened. Isn't that terrible the way the hospitals are so, so burdened with COVID-19 patients that they don't have room for you if you have a heart attack. I decided I wasn't gonna have one. Or uh, me or you, if we fall down, unfortunately falling down is not out of my not out of my environment, but I have to be careful. I don't want to end up with a fracture and have need for a hospital that's stuffed with COVID-19 patients. The hospital is overburdened. The economic disasters are tremendous. And you want to take and make the most out of your budget. Well, you can cut your food bill by about 80% by switching to a starch-based diet. Yes, you can. Cut your medical costs to nothing if you want. Get healthy. That would be a great thing to do, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can make a, a big difference. And uh, you can all do it for free on my website, drbigdougal.com. Everything's there. The recipes, the instructions, the meal plan, the articles about disease, like high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, whether you take this medication or that. It's all there. Yes, and you're encouraged to do it. Thousands, tens, of, hundreds of thousands of people have. Right. But we found need for more intensive care. Just like if you want to become a lawyer, you go to law school, a university or a doctor, you go to medical school. You don't just learn a lot of a book. You really need to have some kind of personal instruction. So we offer that for you. We did for 34 years at residential programs at St. Lena Hospital and our resort in Santa Rosa, California. Yes, we did. We locked you up during that period of time. And you did well. You did extremely well. But we found even greater success either greater happiness from the participants, even more enjoyment from the staff, because you're doing better. We're more effective teachers in our telemedicine, telehealth online program. And I strongly encourage you to look into that for a whole bunch of reasons. It's time to get healthy, to get rid of those chronic problems, to avoid future chronic problems and to avoid the diseases that are right around the corner, like another viral infection to get you set up so you're the most powerful, person available in your marketplace and you can walk into an employer and you can say, look at me, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm very mentally effective, oh boy, and I'm physically fit, you need to hire me. Now is the time to get things settled. And we'd love to help you. You uh, go to drmcdougall.com to find out more about the 12-day telemedicine, teleeducation program where, <clears throat> where we do all the medical work over the internet where our support staff comes into your home every morning and gives you some help at the, uh, at the kitchen, getting ready for breakfast, planning on lunch and dinner. Gives you a little help as far as how you're feeling and collects your data, like your blood pressure, your blood sugar, and whatever, your body weight. Here how you're doing every morning. And then every morning, Mary and I, John and Mary McDougall, get to spend some time with you during our fireside chat. Boy, we have a lot of fun doing that. 
And then you go on to having several lectures during the day from our experts like Doug Lyle, Jeff Novick, Jack Dixon, Heather McDougall, and of course, John McDougall. I get a chance to talk to you quite a few times. And uh, then we follow up with you, not only during the program intensively, dealing with all of your problems, get you to fix the foods that you really enjoy right from the beginning, but we follow up with you afterwards. The nice thing about going through the program, the only way you get to have the advantage of this follow-up is to go through the 12 day program. You can't call up and order this uh, extra care. This extra care involves follow-up visits for as long as you want, weekly or monthly. We included in the program in a certain number of uh, visits uh, during the 12 months that follow you taking the program, but this is forever. This is, you know, 20 years from now, you could still be getting help from our support staff. And a lot of you said the reason that you haven't done this is not because you didn't want to. You just found it too difficult. You needed the extra help. Oh, we're here to offer you the help. Anyway, uh, drmcdougall.com is how you find us and more information. As I say, it's all free. So don't give me the excuse. It costs more than you can afford it. Don't even give me the excuse. In other words, cut the cost from $6,000 to less than half of that. Yes, less than half of that is the new program. Anyway, we're here to help. Uh, I'm here to offer you as much information as I've gathered during my lifetime and particularly my lifetime in medicine. Please keep tuned, tell your friends and relatives that we're the place in town that offers you the second tool in your toolbox. I'm Dr. John McDougall. Thank you for spending time with me.